pas a la presentació de la ciutat de Ljubljana. Ljubljana és el centre polític, administratiu, cultural i econòmic d'Eslovènia i és una ciutat que ha sofert una important transformació els darrers anys en vies de la sostenibilitat. És famosa la transformació que ha fet en pro de la vianalització de la ciutat i del transport públic. Pel que tinc entès, suposo que ara ens explicaran, han sigut capaços d'expulsar pràcticament el vehicle privat del centre de la ciutat i, a més a més, hi ha exemples també en quant a zones verdes i gestió de l'aigua que crec que seran molt interessants. Ens acompanya avui la senyora Simona Verden, que des de 2010 ha estat participant activament en el projecte de Ljubljana Capital Verda Europea i actualment és membre del grup de treball que gestiona el programa de Capital Europea 2007, és a dir, Ljubljana és l'actual Capital Europea i s'encarrega de les relacions internacionals. Ljubljant. Hello and thank you for inviting me. I'm very glad to be here in Barcelona. And of course, I'm very happy here to introduce and to show you a little bit of topics uh, that we have prepared or we think it would be of great interest also for, uh, of course, the conference. Uh, we have already said some things about what actually the European Green Capital Award means, so I'm not, go not going to go into details. But nevertheless, there has been uh, from my both or my three colleagues uh, information about 12 indicators or areas, as uh, Matthias mentioned. I am showing you these indicator, indicators because I believe they are all important and they are all very influential for the urban development for healthier cities. The title of the conference we are dealing with today because it actually tackles the transport, the nature, the waste, con water consumption, energy efficiency, and I believe we all heard a little bit about all these topics today. Uh, here is a map. Uh, of course, there already was a, a list of uh, the capitals, but perhaps it's easier now to see a map of the Europe with, uh, with all the countries and, uh, but of course, the, 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 the cities that were the European green uh, capitals. And I'm happy to say that in uh, two weeks' time, I believe, two weeks, ten, ten days time in Ljubljana, the new European Green Capital 2018 is going to be announced. Uh, now a little bit about uh, my presentation, what we want to show. So when we won, it was a year and a half ago, we have decided to have an info point in the center of the city so we can uh, raise awareness and give information about all these 12 topics uh, that I have shown you before. And we have decided to make, of course, a sustainable uh, building for one year, uh, just in front of the city hall, because it's the most frequent point. In this info point, we give information in all, well, languages, if it's possible, uh, but mostly in Slovene and English. And of course, there is also a place where we can have uh, different uh, workshops, discussions, uh, um, and some other activities. Uh, and we also decided on the themes of the application that I have shown you before, we have also decided that every month in this info point that you have seen, we are going to tackle one of the topics. So this month it's energy, energy efficiency, just just to, to give you a little bit of an example. That also means that, uh, let's say, we are going to have a, a different uh, energy uh, um, expert uh, who is open to the consultations for the citizens. They come with the bills and they say, well, uh, let's see where you can tackle the energy consumption bills and pay a little less. So we want to show the European Green Capital is not just an award which is very prominent per se, but also that is meant for the citizen. It was won because of the citizens and we want to involve them as much as possible. Of course, we decided, for instance, to have in September transport and air quality also because of a U European Mobility Week. Uh, it is, of course, connected with the, uh, with the day without a car. 
And uh, I must say that we are very happy and proud that Ljubljana was actually a city, a European city, that was the only one who won the prize of a European Mobility Week twice. This was in uh, 2003, and the second time was in 2013. So we are trying to tackle all the different, uh, different topics. Uh, for instance, this is just a, a photograph of an info point. Uh, we have a lot of activities for our children, uh, for our kindergartens, and uh, it, can be, uh, it can be very loud. <laughs> Uh, Ljubljana Vision 2025, of course, in 2007, Ljubljana had already decided or, or, let's say, adopted what kind of a city it would like to be and become. I think in this regards, uh, every city is, uh, we are very much alike. Uh, we want to be ideal, we want to have a connection with history, with nature, we want to also provide best, uh, best services for our citizens. Uh, but it was already decided in, in 2007. And one of the most important things that I would like to uh, talk about is about preserving and protecting uh, the green areas and, uh, of course, uh, to preserve a biodiversity. Uh, you can see some information, but uh, because the interpreters interpretation is available, I, I will say it nevertheless. Um, we are proud that native forest uh, covers actually 46% of the entire area of Ljubljana. We are very proud to have uh, around more than 540 square meters of public green area per inhabitant. And also Natura 2000 areas are 16.5%, which are much higher than um, average uh, city has the Natura 2000 um, areas. Uh, perhaps a little bit something, so you will see a little bit of the pictures before and after, but uh, of course what we try to do is to change, uh, is to change brownfield areas into new uh, green uh, areas uh, and uh, we will continue doing this because 83% uh, of city development is actually directed towards a renewal of existing development areas and brownfields and not into building into green areas. So I think we all agree on this uh, panel about it and we will continue doing this. So this is, this is something that was changed into a park. This was also a park which connects now to one of the parks to the city center. Uh, this is now a children's playground. So these are just a little small projects, uh, what can be before and uh, what can actually uh, come out of it. Uh, well, because we are talking also about uh, healthier cities, I must say that I was very impressed that our fitness devices in, uh, of course, public, uh, public parks were really, really popular and they are popular and uh, and I must say that it's interesting to see that uh, intergenerations, I mean, it's not mother going with their children, no, it's their grandmothers going with their grandsons and uh, trying to uh, do some exercise in the fresh air with no pay. Uh, I think we have now already 13 or 14 of these uh, fitness islands all around uh, Ljubljana. Uh, of course, there must be in green areas. We don't want to, uh, to, to have these fitness parks in the, in the more polluted areas, but uh, they are very uh, popular and we receive the different uh, initiatives uh, to, to have even more from our citizens. The second one, as uh, Joseph also uh, mentioned, uh, was the ecological zone. Um, these are just uh, perhaps several pictures of our uh, Ljubljanica river and river banks. Uh, you can see in the, in the last three uh, photos that there are three bridges. I must say that in the last seven years we have built uh, up to eight bridges, um, most of them being only for cyclists and uh, pedestrians. 
Uh, why? Because we cut the, uh, it's, um, it, it, you know, when you're walking or cycling, you don't want to go to another side of the city just to cross the, the river. You want to come from uh, point A to a point B as fast as possible and enjoyable as possible. So that's the reason why we also did a lot of, a lot of bridges, new bridges. Here are some pictures before and after. Um, uh, for instance, I, I, I will show you if you see a little dot. Um, yes, here. The, the, there is a sign. It's very difficult to see it. No, not this one. This one. You see the sign? It doesn't say what it is, but I remember what it was. It was forbidden for pedestrians. <laughs> this one. As you can see, it was also very difficult to walk. There were buses, there were uh, cars, and I must tell you, there were no, really not a place for pedestrian. You always had to go on another side. So now you can see that it looks completely different. Uh, on the upper side, it was also nearby Ljubljana. It's a river. As you can see, the trees are beautiful, but uh, the usage for the trees and for uh, the shades was for the beautiful cars. Now they give us shades for a nice uh, cafe for people, uh, and, uh, and it's completely different feel, uh, different vibes also in the city. Now, this is uh, one of the, our main traffic arteries, Slovenska Street, uh, which, or, which crosses the city from, uh, from uh, east uh, to, to west. So we had an idea already in the project uh, Civita Salan, um, but we were a little bit uh, afraid because we usually close this street uh, at the Euro European Mobility Week. And we always had a car without a car in this street. Uh, we have received a lot of grief, I can tell you. We have received a lot of common, negative comments. When are you going to open it? Uh, it's not helping. And I think after two, three years, suddenly the idea grow that we should just close it for motorized vehicles. Uh, we had done researches. We have seen that is possible. And this is actually the first shared space uh, in Slovenia. Of course, also in Ljubljana, but in Slovenia. Uh, I think that the national legislation doesn't even recognize the shared space, so perhaps it's not really um, legal to do it, but we've done it anyway. <laughs> the shared space, I don't know how much you are familiar with it, but the buses, the public buses, the pedestrians and the cyclists, they are all equal in this, uh, in this traffic regime. Uh, there is no, um, there is no um, traffic lights, so you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot walk around uh, with the telephone and uh, thinking you will hear a sign when you can cross the road, because this is not happening. Uh, you have to communicate with your eyes. Uh, so we were a little bit skeptical what is going to happen. Um, our cyclists are also very, uh, well, very dynamic, if I put it lightly. Uh, but yes, uh, I have to say that it has been proven quite well. Uh, we had a smaller accident with no bigger problems, but just a smaller accident, but it was between a, a cyclist and pedestrian. So. No buses were involved, thank God, for now. Uh, but as you may see, the black carbon concentration actually decreased by 70%, which is really something that we are proud of. And also you can imagine that also the noise, uh, uh, the noise was uh, reduced, uh, uh, well, sustainably. And with closing this for motorized vehicles, we also offered our citizens to come to the to our main park, Tivoli, uh, without really crossing such a huge street uh, like this one was uh, before. This is also, again, some pictures uh, before and after. It's an it's ecological zone. Uh, in the picture below, you can see, okay, there are cars, but there are cars on both ways and buses as well. Um, this one uh, is also very beautiful uh, because the, the building below, 
This is the Slovenian Philharmonie, and it was established in 18th century, so whenever I brought some friends over, some tourists to take a photo, you could never take a photo without cars. So now it's a, it's a, it's a very nice place, and I can tell you that we want to make a European green capital also fun for our citizens, not just work, but also fun. So here, in the whole square, we are going to have a water slide on 16th of July, which is going to be 150 meters big. So when uh, the citizens heard that, uh, of course it's going to be for free, so when they heard that, they starting to call, because of course we are doing with, the, uh, with some uh, stakeholders as well, and uh, they were so impressed that we have received different uh, initiatives like I am 17 years old, I would like to work there, I would like to help you. There's going to be a water bar because this is going to be done by, by our uh, water public company uh, which is dealing with water. So, of course, everything is going to be on the guidelines for, the <laughs> for treating the water and uh, all the events, of course, uh, uh, sustainably. Uh, but, but nevertheless, uh, the, the citizens love it, at least the ones who will have to be in Ljubljana, and it was decided because of the big echo about it that is going to be for two days. Uh, and the slogan is uh, bring, uh, bring your swimming uh, baths, swimming clothes, to the city center. So this is something new and we would like to make them also to make a little bit more amusing. This is also before and after. Uh, you can't really recognize the, the, the street. And because the ecological zone uh, is now already 100,000 square meters big, of course we know that in the city uh, different generations uh, uh, different, well, physically also equipped people live. So what we have decided is to introduce cavaliers. So you see two green um, vehicles. These two cavaliers are actually uh, opened. They are electrical and they are driving around the ecological zone uh, from eight until nine, I think, in the summer. What is very important for us that they are free. So if you're a citizen or if you are a tourist, you call them, you can see the telephone number. I'm not going to show you. I think you saw it. There's a telephone number. So you can, you can phone them or you can just stop like the lady on the street and say, I, uh, I want to go to that direction. Can you please take me? Uh, he, well, they are very nice. They will take you. Uh, but if he perhaps doesn't have the place, because it's full or he wants to pick up somebody up, he will tell you, I'm coming in 10 minutes, where can we meet? So these are two open vehicles and we have also two closed vehicles, which uh, are also uh, equipped so that the wheelchair can go uh, inside. And when it's raining, it's much more comfortable to use the closed ones. Um, they are very popular. Uh, they have uh, around, I talked to the drivers, they told me that they have like 350 passengers per day. Um, and they told me also some funny stories that uh, usually at 8 o'clock when they start to work, they already know which lady, which lives in the old city park, uh, part, uh, they have to pick up, take her to the market, so she buys all her things and drive her back to her home. Uh, and if they are late, they are not, she, the lady is not very happy. <laughs> so this is something, <laughs> this is something that, that the citizen know, that knows that they, this is for them. They can use it. It's difficult for them to walk. We also want them to, to, be, to, to go to the city, not to be in the apartments all day long. Uh, so, uh, so they are very, very, very nice. Um, the other one, of course, as most of the cities, uh, also Ljubljana has a, a bike sharing, um, a bike sharing system. Um, it was uh, actually introduced in 2011, and from to, up to today, it had uh, three and a half million journeys. Now, and when I took uh, three and a half million journeys. 
I know you think this is not much, but you have to consider that Ljubljana has 280,000 inhabitants. So for us, 3.5 million, it's a lot, especially because whole of Slovenia has 2 million. So uh, we, are, we are used to a smaller, perhaps, numbers than, <laughs> than you do. <laughs> Uh, then something a little bit about, about our ecological uh, zone well, co with connection with our public space. Uh, um, I know that Vittoria said uh, a lot of uh, things uh, about the Green Belt. I visited it. It's really wonderful. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to comment on path of remembrance and comradeship. In a sense, this is a Green Belt as well, but we call it, of course, differently. It was established in 1956, so this year we celebrated 60th uh, anniversary. It is uh, 34 kilometers long. It has the longest tree avenue of 6,000 trees. And why it is important for us, not only because it is all around Ljubljana, but it has a historical moment for us citizens of Ljubljana. In the Second World War, uh, Ljubljana was uh, uh, was surrounded with a barbed wire, uh, first from Italians who occupied Ljubljana and later uh, from Germans. In this way, uh, the citizens of Ljubljana and also outsiders could not really go into Ljubljana or come out of it. So in this way, uh, every year on 9th of May, when we celebrate the liberation of Ljubljana, there is also this historical moment when, when we remember that once it was closed and it was decided in 1956 that in honor of this historical moment, we should build like, of course, not the barbed wire, but green belt of these 34 kilometers. And every year on 9th of May, the citizens remember it by walking, by running, by cycling. And this 9th of May, let just for your il illustration, uh, 30,000 people attend it. So it's a, it's a quite popular, uh, popular event. You see, it's going all around it. And here you see some pictures of uh, our path of remembrance and comradeship. Every way on the way, there are also information tables. And uh, it has, uh, of course, uh, there is a special NGO who takes care of, uh, of all this area. Well, I haven't been, uh, I haven't heard a lot about waste management, but in my opinion, it's also important for the improvement of the healthier cities. Um, Ljubljana in this area is doing, I believe, quite a lot. Um, we are the capital, first capital in the European Union that has the largest share of separately collected waste in, in between them, and also the first EU capital that has decided to be actually the, uh, to adopt the zero waste plan, which we have adopted it. Um, what is zero waste plan? There are three words to understand it. Reuse, recycle, and reduce. So it's, it's, it's even, don't buy that much waste. <laughs> it's very good if you, can, uh, if you can collect it separately, but nevertheless, let's try not to even produce it uh, and buy it in such a great quantities. Um, so we are very proud of it. Uh, uh, we are working hard and all the events that take place in Ljubljana and also will take place, like the one I told you about water slide, is going to be also in connection with this, uh, with this um, zero waste plan. So we are trying to, 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 to have uh, in every aspect of our uh, development uh, to continue with, uh, with, with our goals. What you see on the photo is the Regional Waste Treatment Center. Um, it was opened, test opened uh, last year, uh, at the end of the year, so it's still in the test trial. But nevertheless, I think it's interesting to see that not, this is not only a treatment center for Ljubljana, but also for 37 mun municipalities around Ljubljana. Uh, in this way, uh, I think we have to work together because waste is becoming a great problem. And with this treatment center, uh, the center is actually going to solve the problem, uh, problems of the waste for one third of Slovenia for 30 to 40 years. 
uh, it will produce its own energy, it will produce the, the compost and so on and so forth. So we have to move forward from the waste being just a burden into a waste being also an energy. And last but not least, I believe water. Water is very important. Um, um, when I come from Ljubljana, I see that I get a lot of bottles. Uh, in Ljubljana, we give a tap water. Um, and uh, being really, really proud of it because we see it's rare. Uh, we, have, uh, we have preserved our water resources already in 1955. Uh, which is the reason uh, why you see uh, there's no, I mean, the water is not treated, doesn't need any treatment. Uh, you just have a tap water, put the water inside and drink it. It uh, does, you doesn't need chlorine, doesn't need anything. So this is something that, uh, that we are proud of and uh, trying to encourage uh, not just uh, citizens and tourists, which are coming with two liter big uh, water plastic bottles, um, but also also uh, um, restaurants uh, and and everybody else who is using it. Um, well, also for for let's say for tourists and for visitors, we have um, we have adopted a special um, app uh, tap water Ljubljana, so so that. Uh, so that the telephone recognizes in which location you are, and it will give you the closest way to the public fountain. Now, public drinking fountains are around Ljubljana. On different locations, there are more than 30. Uh, we'll show you our pictures a little later, and uh, which means that you can just come there, uh, have a, a glass or, or just have a water. It's for free. Of course, it's in the system of the uh, quality measurements. Um, and in this way, we would like to say people, well, use the water, uh, don't buy it, you will pay more for the plastic bottle than for the water itself. So now you will see, uh, like, I think, three small pictures of a public drinking fountains. They are a little bit modern, they are a little bit funny, they are, they are one is of the kangaroo. Uh, and uh, so... This is also what we, uh, what we would like to offer also uh, our tourists and citizens to, to take care of it. So that's all from me. Thank you very much and welcome to Ljubljana. <laughs>